Hear ye, hear ye! Step right up, werewolves of the 1940s! Here now! Get your tickets ready! The Wolfman, 1941. And here we have it, the most famous of ancient werewolves of film, or more accurately put, Wolfmen. The Wolfman was a great and everlasting addition to the monsters of Universal Studios. As fans caught sight, every decade became filled with werewolf media from then on. Walking on his tiptoes, the digitigrade leg concept on a humanoid was first loosely put into action. The Mad Monster, 1942. A little less beastly than our previous film, this wolfman's facial features retained many of its human features, such as the nose and exposed pale cheeks. The Undying Monster, 1942. Just look at that drop! This wolfman is little more than just a fuzzy person, but he is indeed the fuzziest to this point, other than the actual full wolf werewolves, of course. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, 1943. Not much is new here, some aesthetical fur improvements, but hey, what happened to the Digitigrade Foot Act? I guess you won't have to worry about this half beastie sneaking up on you. Lou de Merfagneur, 1943. The second French movie on our list, but the first to feature an actual werewolf, albeit the full wolf shapeshifter kind. Looking closer at the fur, seems a German Shepherd was or were used instead of actual wolves. The Return of the Vampire, 1943. This wolfman outfuzzied the Undying Monsters version of 1942. Reminiscent of the original Wolfman movie, he sports a blackened nose with wolfish ears never before seen on a werewolf hybrid like this. If only more attention had been put on the neck. Cry of the Werewolf, 1944. Another full human to wolf type situation with what appeared to be dog or dogs in filming rather than actual wolf or wolves. Although it could be a hybrid. You just never know. House of Frankenstein, 1944. Universal Studios creation is back for the third time. Although lesser groomed than in this previous showing, Dr. Frankenstein could be to blame for that. We do get a closer, clearer shot of the great little practical details on the face and hands. Idle Roamers, 1944. And who's this cheeky fella? If this werewolf slash wolfman looks more comedic to you, well then it's very well that he should. As he quote unquote terrorizes Curly, Larry, and Moe, that's right, the Three Stooges. Hmm, interesting special effects approach with hair clearly at odds, separated from fur by the naked forehead. Steelwolf! House of Dracula, 1945. Guess who's back? Twice the fur and half the screen time. Oh well, at least he seems more bright-eyed. She-Wolf of London, 1946. Well, she's the werewolf, but unfortunately the actual werewolf form is never shown. What a shame. Blood. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, 1948. And once more, before the decade ends, we go from horror to zany. Our universal Wolfman comes back with slight changes that I appreciated, such as the curvature of the indentation running down the center of the nose, and the more crude, mangy overall look. And there you have it, folks. Werewolves of films of the 1940s. Only here at World of Monsters. Join us next time as we jump into the 1950s. What cruel, outrageous, hair-covered flesh masses await us there with pointy teeth and pointy ears.